Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Folks, I have survived a lot of events while I've been on the air. A Buddhist and Muslim tag team, Kip and Malvester. <laughs> He might be gonna put his preach in something. He might have one. Yeah, the, the preacher may not be thrilled uh, when he gets that phone call this evening. That's right. <laughs> Belligerent BTW. Oh well, let me just bring that up too. He has a criminal record. He don't want nobody to know. Doug, is that airtime available after this show? Because if it is, I am personally going to buy it so I can replay his comments and I can make my comments about his comments and tell people at home how his comments are wrong. And the valley of the shadow of death. I wonder if I can survive a time change. My new time on Sunday night, 9 p.m. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Well, see, like I said, everybody gets different interpretations of the Bible. The Bible, I don't like get something from the Bible that you didn't get, but it's in the Bible. Where the is Lord the Lord unto the Lord. Where in the Bible? So, i tell you what, next next Thursday, I'm going to call. Okay. And I'm going to have my scriptures ready for you. Okay. I'm going to get my scriptures. I'm, I'm going to read okay. my Bible and find the scriptures. Okay. And I'm going to quote it to you. Okay. Now, here's what... Now, it's, now, in now, it's in the Bible. I mean, you, okay. you, you, you're disputing people down. I mean, you know... But here's what but here's what we got to make sure we're talking about here. We're talking about New Testament worship. Do I, I will, let's go okay, let's I'll tell you what. Let's go by the old testament, not no. the new testament. See, the no. old testament is is, is, is I believe it is, is the real Bible. You oh, know what really? I'm saying? Okay. Old Testament. See the New Testament Sir? is is is, is, is you, about what Do you do you hey. keep Okay. Welcome to Word of the Lord, Jim like Everybody here with you. Different. We are <clears throat> going to go back over this call that we had last week, and we are, hopefully, the gentleman will call in, and we'll have a discussion. We'll finish having a discussion on this, uh, uh, on this topic, but we want to give you our content information before we get into our lesson, 250 the Boulevard where we meet. Uh, 276 340 2653, or you can reach me at 336 394 5721, word from the Lord at gmail.com. If you're in the uh, Eden area, we'd like to see you. If you're in the Martinsville or Danville area, here's where you can reach the brethren there, H23 Starling Avenue in Martinsville, 120 American Legion in Danville. And uh, we know that you will be warmly welcome there. We encourage you to go out and, and visit with the brethren there. Also, I want to remind you what does the Bible say coming on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. on on WHIGTV.com. This is out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Brother Johnny Robertson is down there. And this is a, a program that he started uh, not too long ago. And so I want you to uh, uh, be sure and watch that as well and uh, support that. Encourage anybody that you know in that area. Uh, I'm not sure how, how large the broadcast area is, but I, I would gather it would be pretty big uh, to tune in and, and watch uh, the program there as we are spreading the gospel and thus spreading the borders of the kingdom. We want to encourage you to do that. Friends, I want to um, uh, remind you that this is what took place last week. Jim called in toward the end of the program. Actually, it was the last call on the program. And was saying, we were discussing, uh, or the topic came up by instrumental music. And he was basically saying he wanted to use the Old Testament. He wants to go back under the, under the Old Testament uh, that's the real Bible, he said. And I want to play you uh, this, uh, the entire call, if I can. I see that there's a call blinking that may be him. I, I'm not going to take it yet. I want to let everybody hear the entire call. And uh, here's what he has to say. And then we will come back and uh, go into a lesson about the differences between the Old and New Testament. So, Scott, if you will drop me and we'll just we'll go into this call. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I'm sitting here listening to you. It seems like to me that you, you're going against what the Bible says. How's that? Because 
when when people take when people quote stuff of the Bible and and tell you like far with the music, it's like you going against what's in the Bible. You supposed to be for the Bible. I'm for the Bible. I'm I'm actually more <laughs> for the Bible than the people who are saying we want mechanical instruments of music. I'm 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 saying I'm more for the Bible than you are. I'm saying just use the Bible, and they're adding to it. Say, how can you say that then? How can you say that then? you more for the Bible than I? You don't know me. You judge me, and you don't know me. So how can you I, do that? Well, sir, if you're what? if you're if you're defending using mechanical, I'm not defending nothing. It's just that it's just that you you you're twisting the you you twisting the Bible up to say what you wanted to say and and, and what you think you should no, sir. say. All right, let's let's all right. Let, let, just in case, in case I'm wrong here, let's start all over again. I'm saying the Bible says. I'm just going to read from the Bible, Ephesians five and verse nineteen. Speak to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, where are mechanical instruments of music in that? Where do you get the authorization to play the piano, the drums, the guitar, the tambourine, whatever? Like I said, everybody gets different interpretations of the Bible. The Bible, I might get something from the Bible that you didn't get, but it is in the Bible. Where the is it, sir? Lord unto the Lord. Where in the Bible? So, I tell you what, next, next Thursday, I'm going to call. Okay. And I'm going to have my scriptures ready for you. Okay. I'm going, now, I'm going to get my scriptures. I'm, I'm going to okay. read my Bible and find the scriptures. Okay. And I'm going to quote to you. Okay. Now, here's what... Now, it's now, in the Bible. Now, it's in the Bible. I mean, you, okay. you, you, you just keep people down. I mean, you know... But here's what But here's what we got to make sure we're talking about here. We're talking about New Testament worship. Do I, I will, let's go... Okay, let's... I'll tell you what. Let's go by the Old Testament, not no. the New Testament. See, the no. Old Testament is... is, is, is I believe it is the real Bible. You know oh, what I'm really? saying? Okay. Old Testament. See, the New Testament Sir? is is is, is, is you, about what. Do you do you hey, keep? You know what I'm saying? No, sir. Now I don't want I don't want to go by the Old Testament. You know why? Because I, I want Je why. I want Jesus to be my high priest, and he cannot be your he can't be your high priest if you go to the Old Testament. High priest. Do you want Jesus as your high priest? But you listen. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Okay, why you only want to go by the New Testament and, and not go by the Old Testament? Because, sir, because I understand that Jesus finished the old law, the Old Testament, and He brought in a New Testament. Now, if if we're under the Old Testament, Jesus doesn't do anything for us. Look at this. In Galatians 5, now I'm, I'm running out of time. Now, now listen, I'm running out of time, so i got to get this. Jesus, no, no, listen. Now listen, I'm running out of time, and I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to make this point. Jesus put, brought in the New Testament, and Paul said, if we don't do the whole law, you're a debtor to the whole law. If, you, if you're not circumcised, if you don't keep all the Old Testament, you're a debtor to the whole law. And then he says, Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. Now, you want to be justified by the Old Testament. You just said it. Now, Jesus doesn't do anything for you. He's of no effect to you. Now, I don't want to go by the Old Testament. I mean, you, you don't want to write and, and nobody else is... No, the Bible's right, sir. The Bible's it's, right, it's sir. It's like to me the false prophet. You, no. you, you're a false prophet to me. Well... Sir, you don't even like understand the difference between the for, Old and New Testament. Just for show. All right. All right. I'm out of time. Thanks for your call. Friends, I find it very interesting that I'm a false prophet, and here's a man that doesn't even understand the difference between the Old and New Testament. He wants to live under the Old Testament, and that's fine. Next week, sir, bring your scriptures. We'll be ready for you. We'll be ready for your call next week, and we'll be looking forward to it. Okay, and that's what we're going to be discussing. Now, friends, here's my question. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of comments we could we could make about that call. Uh, he he began saying that I'm judging him. I don't know him, and I'm judging him. And then at the end of the call, he called me a false prophet. Well, he doesn't know me, yet he's judging me. But I'm sure that wasn't a judgment on his part. Nonetheless, here's my question: Why would anybody? 
want to be under a system, the Old Testament, why would they want to be under a system that God said is not good enough? Now, Paul said in Romans 7 and verse 12 that the law, the Old Testament, is good. All right? He, he said it was good. It served its purpose. Romans chapter 7, I believe it's verse 12 here. He says, wherefore, the law is, the, the law is holy and the commandment holy, just, and good. All right? So we know the Old Testament was good. But the question that we have to ask is, was it good enough? God said it wasn't good enough. So when someone says, I want to use the Old Testament, I, that's the real Bible, then I have to question, do you really understand that you're wanting a system that even God said was not good enough? Now, why does God call the Old Testament old? Why does he use words like New Testament? <clears throat> why does he say the first and the second. And why is he going to change it if the Old and New Testament both are in effect? If you want to go back and live in the Old Testament and you want all the blessings and benefits of the New Testament, <clears throat> why does God make such a, a strong distinction between those two? Now, I want you to consider something, friends. You need to understand that if you go back to the Old Testament for anything, you're actually going back to a system that God said is not good enough. Now, do you really want to go back to the Old Testament? In Hebrews 7, verse 12, look what, what, what the writer says. He says, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Now, the priesthood, that is the, the, the system by which man came to God, the priesthood, it changed. Under the Old Testament, it was Levitical priesthood. Everybody had to be sons of Levi. The high priest had to be sons of Aaron. But on the New Testament, the priesthood was changed. The only way you get to change the priesthood is if you change the law. Now, you can't have two systems going side by side, going together, running consecutively, in, both in effect, when they contradict each other like that. So what you need to realize is God changed the law. Here's another one. In Hebrews 8, verses 7 and 8, if the first, if that first covenant had been faultless, now remember, Paul said it was good, but it wasn't perfect. It wasn't the best system. He said, but if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Now, friends, the reason why men improve on inventions is because the first one just wasn't good enough. It was nice. You know, that first car, that first horseless carriage, it was nice. It was, a, it was an improvement from the horse and buggy. But you know what? It, it's nothing like what we have today. It's nothing like the automobiles you have today. Well, maybe one of those little smart roller skate cars. Maybe, I, maybe you'd rather have a horse and buggy. But, it, but if, you want to, if you want to do work on a farm, listen, a good pickup will do a whole lot more work than a horse and buggy. Or a tractor will plow a whole lot more ground than that, than that mule in the plow. So the first system was okay, it was good, but it wasn't perfect. Otherwise, God wouldn't have brought in a better system. He says, notice, for finding fault with them, he saith, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now, why would he make a new covenant why would he make a new system and take away the first if the first was so perfect? But yet people go, well, the Old Testament, that's the real Bible. Friends, I think you need to read, to it and you need to read the New Testament. You need to read the whole Bible. Because even the Old Testament, even the Old Testament pointed to the time when the New Testament was going to be in place, when there was going to be a better system coming. Even the Old Testament that people want to go under says, oh, wait a minute. There's something better coming. You might want to wait till something better comes along. See? So, so you, need to, you need to consider, do you really want to be under the Old Testament? Notice this is in Hebrews 9, verse 15. Hebrews 9, verse 15. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Now, this is Christ. Christ is the mediator of the New Testament. Watch it. That by means of death, when Christ died, here's what happened. 
for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now, do you think, do you, do you stop and realize the, the uh, importance of this, the significance of it? Friends, Jesus died and became the mediator of the New Testament. He brought in a New Testament so that people who died under the first testament could actually have their sins forgiven. His blood was shed so that those who died in faith, looking for a better system, looking for the better covenant, looking for the Messiah, their sins would be forgiven. Now you folks today have Christ in place, ready to be your mediator, ready to be your savior, and you say, well, I want to go back to the Old Testament because it's the real Bible. You want to go back to a system that Christ has already shed his blood for and sealed, finished. He nailed it to the cross and you say, I want to go back to that system. A system that it took Christ coming to even fulfill. It took Christ coming to even make it to where uh, the sins under that first covenant could be forgiven. And you know, you want to go backwards. See, something's wrong with this picture, friends. Do you really, do you really want to go back to the Old Testament? Do you really want to go under, uh, back to the, to the Old Testament? Let me give you one more. <clears throat> Hebrews 10 verse 9. <clears throat> then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Christ is coming to do the will of the Father. He taketh away the first. That's the Old Testament. That's the real Bible, my friend. He took away the first that he may establish the second. Now, friends, if you say, I want to go back to the Old Testament, I want to be justified by the Old Testament, I want to get my authority from the Old Testament, I want to do things uh, in a certain way because the Old Testament says it, then you're going back to a system that Christ took away. He took it away. That, that word take away means to take away, to abolish. It means, it means to remove it out of, uh, uh, out of play, if you will. He took, he took it out of the way. Because in, if it was still in effect, you couldn't bring the new system in. See, you can't, you can't put something new down with that old in place. Now, out here uh, in Reedsville, <clears throat> they're, they're building a bypass. Now, I've heard a lot of people talking about how they feel about this new bypass on Freeway Drive. But I'll tell you this. They're going to take away the old road before they put in the new road. They have to take out the old before they can put in the new. Jesus had to take away the old in order to bring in the new. But yet you want to go back to the Old Testament? You want to go back to the old law? You want to go back to what God said wasn't good enough? You want to go back to a system that wasn't, uh, uh, that wasn't, that couldn't forgive sins in place of one that can forgive sins? Notice this in Hebrews 7 verse 22. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. A better testament. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Now, if the new is so much better than the old, why do you want to go back to it? Why do you want to go back to that old system? Why do you want to go back to the, the old and not as good system if there's something better, new and improved, right there in front of you? I just don't understand. I don't understand why someone would call, call in and defend and say, you know what, I want to go back to the Old Testament. Because I can assure you, friend, you don't want to go into the Old Testament. You do not want to say the Old Testament is what I'm dealing with. The Old Testament is what I'm living under. You don't really want that. All right? Now, I'm going to take this call. It, it's been blinking, and I've been wanting to kind of lay some groundwork here. I don't know if this is our friend calling. I hope it is. If it's not, then... Anybody who knows who that gentleman was who called, tell him, call in, and, uh, and we'll uh, have this discussion. You're on the word of the Lord. Yeah, um, I don't think that man will be calling in, but I, I've had the same uh, problem with it. Like I was uh, 
God gave me the talent to play music, and I've been uh, playing gospel music for years and recorded gospel CDs, and it took me a long time to come to to take it in, you know, where I'm not supposed to play it anymore. I mean, it's okay for me to play music, but right. leave God out of it. But, right. Yeah, yeah. See that that and and I I really appreciate that, sir. The fact that you re, you come to realization that something you've enjoyed is not really what God wanted. Now you can play, you know. I mean, listen. I was listening to some bluegrass music this morning, you know. Uh, Flats and Scruggs, man. I, I I like that. But you know what? I'm not gonna put it in worship because God doesn't want it. Now that's not that hard to understand. And I appreciate the fact that, you know, you realize, hey, you know what, this is something I've got to give up because it's not right with God. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It took me a long time. It wasn't something that was overnight. Right. It took me, a, you know, I had to study on it, you know. and It's just it's one verse that tells you to play in this day, but it's still it's hard to sink in. And, it, you know, it took me a a month or so, but, you know, I finally realized that, you know, that it was wrong, and I quit doing it. But there's uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you about. Okay. I keep I keep trying to catch Johnny. He brought up y'all have a, uh, a correspondence Bible study now. Yes, sir. I was wondering if I could get enrolled in that. You sure can. Uh, Mark McMinnis is sitting right over here to my right. And uh, uh, I'm going to put you on hold, and he'll get your contact information, and he'll sign you up. I still appreciate it. And uh, I've, been, I've been listening to Johnny, I guess, going 15, 17 years, something like that. I can't remember. And been listening to y'all, too. And it's, it's hard for people to put down what they've done all their life right. and take in you gotta, you got to dig deep and deep. what you want to do what you want to do, you want to do what the Bible says. Right. And, and it's, hard, it's hard for people to put down what they've been doing. Like, like the uh, Baptists, you know, they've been pounded in the head, you know, and the, the Methodists has been pounded in the head. I was brought up Baptist, singing and playing music, and it took, you know, it takes a while for it to come around. And, I, and even uh, the scientist guy, uh, he's a smart man, but, you know, I think I think Johnny's softening him up a little bit. He ain't quite as tough as he was when he first started calling in. I think he's starting to soften up a little bit. Maybe so. Maybe so. I hope he does. So, I so let does. me ask you, sir, so... so you say you were a Baptist, so where do you go now? What do you worship anywhere now? Are you a member of any church? I'm kind of, kind of just uh, stay home most of the time. I'm disabled and ain't really able to get out and do a whole lot. That's the reason I wanted to do this Bible correspondence thing. Okay. Are you in the Martinsville area? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I just heard Johnny speak on it a couple. About a week full last, and every time that he's been on a different subject, and that, and I couldn't get in every time. So okay. that's the first time I've been able to get in. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll I'll put you on hold, and Mark will get your information and sign you up. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks for your call. That's line two, Mark. All right. So very very good call. Now see, there's a gentleman that realizes. He said, you know, it's not about what. It's not about what man wants, it's about what God wants. And if you go back to the Old Testament to try to justify things like instrumental music, friends, you're giving up the better. You're giving up the best. You're giving up the system that can actually forgive sins. I mean, Paul said that the old covenant could not forgive sins. Hebrews 10, the blood of bulls and goats cannot forgive sins, and that's what you want to go back to. Now, here's what some people say. Some people say, well, you know, you're saying, cut the Old Testament out of the Bible. No, I'm not saying that, friends. Someone says, well, 
You say, well, we ought to just get rid of the Old Testament. Don't use it at all. No, didn't say that at all. Are you saying that we should just never use the Old Testament, that we should just uh, get rid of it, that it's not part of the Bible? No, I didn't say that either. Listen, the Old Testament has a purpose. That's why it's there. It's still part of the Bible, but it is not the authority. It is not what is followed as the rules. The New Testament is. Let me give you this example. I, I think this is one of the best illustrations that I can come up with to explain this. Now, we understand what this is. This is the Constitution. The Constitution of the United States is the law of our land. All right? And we understand that sometimes there are some changes that are made to the Constitution. They're called amendments. Now, I want you to consider this. Here is Amendment 18. The 18th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America says this. After one year from the ratification of this article, the manufacturer, sale, and tra or transportation of intoxicating liquors within, the importation thereof into, or the exportation thereof from the United States and all territories subject in the to the jurisdiction thereof for beverage purposes here is hereby prohibited. That is what we know as prohibition. They outlawed the sale, the distribution, the consumption of alcoholic beverages. Now, that's the 18th Amendment to the Constitution. Now, friends, it takes some doing to get a constitutional amendment, to, uh, to amend the Constitution. But this, this took place. This took place. All right? Now, that's the 18th Amendment. Well, you know what happens? Here's what happened. We all know what happened. The 21st Amendment came along. The 21st Amendment came along, and notice what it says. The 18th Article of Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. That's the one we just read, the one that prohibits the sale of alcohol. The 18th Amendment of the Constitution of the United States is hereby repealed. Uh, and is, uh, uh, starts hereby repealed. That's all it says. The 18th Amendment is repealed. The 21st comes along and says, 18th, no, no longer in effect. All right? So, let me ask you this. Are both of these laws part of the Constitution? Are both these laws part of the Constitution of the United States? They certainly are. They most certainly are part of the Constitution. The 18th Amendment will always say the sale of alcohol is prohibited. It will always say that the sale, the transportation, the importation, the exportation of alcoholic beverages, intoxicating beverages in the United States is prohibited. It will always say that. But the 21st comes along and says, you know what? We're repealing the 18th. Now, friends, both of those are part of the Constitution. They will always be part of the Constitution, but they are both not in effect. Both of them cannot be in effect because they contradict each other. You can't have one law saying, you know what? You can't sell it. You can't, you can't make it, can't sell it, can't distribute it, can't drink it. And another law says, yes, you can. That's a contradiction. One outweighs the other. And one says, yes, you can. One says, no, you can't. The 21st repealed the 18th. They're both part of the Constitution, but only one is in effect. Friends, the Bible, the Bible is made up of two covenants. Two amendments, if you will, for the comparison's sake. The Old Testament is the, like the 18th, and the New Testament is like the 21st. And the 21st, the New Testament says the Old Testament is no longer in effect. Now, friend, I think if you can see through a ladder, you can see that. If you're honest... You're not going to say, well, I still want to go back to the Old Testament. Say, you can't, you can't, you can't uh, uh, expect two laws to be in effect that contradict each other. You can't have one guy saying, well, you know what? The 18th says you, you, you can't drink alcohol. And then here's, the, here's the, uh, the drunkard over here passed down the street, and one of them says, well, the 21st Amendment says that the 18th is taken away. Now, I'm not, I'm not advocating 
imbibing, selling, exportation, exporting, importing alcoholic beverages at all. But I think you see the principle here. Two parts of the same law can exist as part of the law, but only one is in effect. Only one's in effect. Now, friends, I, I know you get that. I know you can see that. So if you want to say both of them are in effect, you're going to have some contradictions because you can't have the old covenant. You can't hold on to the old covenant. Sir, I'm, I'm hoping you call in. I'm, I'm, I've, I've allotted some time for you to call in. So I, I want you to call in with those scriptures from the Old Testament and how you're going to defend instrumental music. But here's the thing. You're going, to have, you're going to have to face the contradictions. Is that first one for me? All right. If you use the Old Testament for authority, it's going to have some conflicts with the New Testament. If you, if you say, you know what, I'm going to use the Old Testament, it's the old law, that's the real Bible, you're going to have some conflicts when it comes to the New Testament. Because if both laws are authoritative, you're going to have some contradictions. Let, let me just go through some, some, some of these. Here are some of these contradictions that you're going to have to deal with. And I'm asking you, friends, if you think you're going to go to the Old Testament, or if you think the Old Testament is the real Bible, as the caller said last week, and you're going to try to justify things like instrumental music uh, from the Old Testament, well, you're going, to have, you're going to have a problem with the New Testament. Because consider this. The Old Testament, the Old Testament specified a certain place where God was to worship. Let's look at this. In Deuteronomy 12, Deuteronomy 12, verse 5. All right. Unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, even unto his habitation shall ye seek, and thither thou shalt come. And thither ye shall bring your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, and your tithes, and heave offerings, and your hand, and your vows, and your free will offerings, and the firstlings of your herds, and your flocks. And there shall ye eat before the Lord <clears throat> your God, and ye shall rejoice in all that ye put your hand unto, unto, and ye and your households, wherein the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. There's a certain place. There's a certain place. First Kings chapter 8. First Kings 8, verse 16. Here we go. Since the day that I brought forth my people out of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house that my name might be therein, but I chose David to be over my people. And it was in the heart of David, uh, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said unto David, my father, whereas it was in thine heart to build a house in my name, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. Nevertheless, thou shalt not build a house, but thy son shall come forth out of thy loin, he shall build uh, the house unto thy name. And the Lord hath performed his word that he spake, and I am risen up in the room of David my father to sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised and have built a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. Now friends, where God, God says, where I set my name, that's where you have to come worship. Now, friends, I suspect. Now, I don't know, but I have a strong inclination to believe that the gentleman that called in last week and said the Old Testament is the real Bible and he wants to use the Old Testament, I suspect he hasn't been to Jerusalem to worship. I suspect he hasn't taken his tithes and his offerings and his burnt offerings and he hasn't taken his household over to Jerusalem where God put his name. That's the Old Testament. 
See? Because the Old Testament said Jerusalem is where God put his name. But you know what the New Testament says? The New Testament says, no, there, there's no such place. There's no such place. John 4, verse tw uh, 20 to 22. John 4, verse 20 to 22. Jesus said that the woman at the well, Samaritan woman said, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where man ought to worship. Well, that's where God said. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jew. But the hour cometh, but the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Jesus said there's going to come a time when there's not going to be a specific place where you worship God. Now, that's the contradiction between, that's one of the contradictions between the Old and New Testament. If both of them are in effect, and you want to hold on to both of them, you're going to be torn. Now, do I have to go to Jerusalem or do I not have to go to Jerusalem? The Old Testament said, yes, you have to go. The New Testament says, no, you don't have to go. So which is it, okay? You're on the word of the Lord. Yes. I wanted to talk about the plan is going to in the church service. Okay. Are you the gentleman that called last week? No, I'm somebody else. Okay. Go ahead. Now, Ephesians 5, 19. Okay. And it says, I'm looking at the, the word S-O-N-G-S. Okay. If you look it up in the Greek, it means string instrument. Songs? This word right here, songs, means stringed instrument? Yes. Are you sure about that? Correct. Okay. Go ahead with your argument. Go ahead. I'm going to put over where I can operate a little bit better. i got a little delay there. All right. Go ahead. Okay, Revelation 14, 3. They're talking about the angel worshiping God with, with a harp, which is a string instrument. Okay. Okay, so so what do angels have to do with New Testament worship? Definitely, well, what's, happen New Testament. what's happening in heaven is not happening in the New Testament worship today. Number one. Number two, this word songs is not what you said it was. S-O-N-T-S. Right here. It's in the Greek 5503. Right here. 603. With the Greek. Okay. I have trouble, trouble getting over here. Uh, excuse me. I mean, 5603. 5603 in the Greek. Okay. It doesn't say stringed instrument, I don't believe, does it? Do you put it up in the Greek? The old Greek accordance? I, 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 I'm pulling it up right here. Let me get over where I can. There's a little delay there, and that's what's really giving me trouble. All right. Here's the definition. A chant, the general term for any word sung, denotes especially a religious composition, especially... A Hebrews, a Hebrew cantillation. It doesn't say anything about string. If you got a Greek concordance, it says string instrument. I don't know what you're reading out of. I'm reading a strong, here's a strong definition right here, sir. Right here. 50, 5603. 5603. That's what I'm reading. Now, hang on a second. I'm, I'm pulling it up here so, we can, so everybody can see it. There it is, 5603. All right. A chant or ode, the general term for any words sung while 5215 denotes 
especially a, a uh, religious metrical composition, and 5568, still more especially, a Hebrews cantillation. Now that's Strong's Concordance. That's what you, that's what you wanted. 5603. Doesn't say anything about string. My, my concordance says string instrument, 5603, out of the Greek. Well, that's Greek, the that's the Greek, Greek term right there. I just read it English now. English Bible was translated out of. I'm sorry? I just I just read the I read the word that you wanted me to read and it didn't say what you said it said. Maybe you should go back and do a little studying on it. But here's the oh, thing, I, sir. Here's the if thing, I sir. Bring, if I could bring my Bible to the show, if I bring my Bible to the show and show you the Greek concordance, it'll say Muse instrument. I, I'm I'm and I'm gonna tell you the thing about that verse though, sir, even if it did, here's the thing. Hebrews fifty uh, Ephesians five, nineteen Paul said, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing. Now, it's not playing. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, if there was a stringed instrument in this verse that was being used, where... Is it going to be played? It's going to be played in worship service. No, in your heart. Singing and making uh, melody in your heart. Now, sir, do you have a string the, instrument if, in your heart? Angel you, if the angel used string instrument to praise God. Sir, are you talking about in heaven? Are we in heaven yet? What does Psalm, what does Psalm 150 say? All right, so, so now we're going uh, back to the Old Testament. That's exactly what I. That's what, exactly what I've waited for you to no, do. No, no, no. Listen, you. I seen you use the Old Testament to to, to say that you were not born into sin. Now, why can't I use the Old Testament where it says you you uh, use string instruments, sir? Psalm one fifty. What did you say about? I, I missed that first part about the psalm. You used so, the psalm to prove you're born in sin. What it, what it did say is, go read the whole song when it says string instruments. Okay, sir, but this, says, this, this is... street and hearts. This is my whole point about Psalm 150 and all the psalms. There in the Old Testament, did you not hear the whole half, first half of the show? If you go back to the Old Testament and say, this is why I'm using what I use in worship, and I'm not going to use what God said in the New Testament, you are actually giving up the better the new, system. The new, the new Testament is what we're supposed to go by. That is exactly right. So why don't you go back to Psalm 150? The same way you, you used Ezekiel to say that you were born in sin. You used the Old Testament to I, say you were born in the I, sin. Why sir, can't I use the Old Testament sir, to talk about sin? Sir, I never said you was born in sin. I, I don't. Uh, I don't I teach you born in sin. Testament to say that he wasn't born in the sin. I ain't say you used the Old Testament. No, to... sir. When we go to the Old Testament uh, dealing with born in sin, that's because that's what people use. That's what false teachers use to say you're born in sin. Now, if we're going to answer that, we have to go back and explain why that's not the case. You're not born in sin. We we don't go back to the Old Testament to justify. Born in sin, we go back to the Old Testament to explain how they've got it wrong. The Old Testament has a purpose. Romans 15, verses 1 through 4, the things that are written aforetime were for our learning, but they're not what we get authority from. Here's the contradictions that we, that we face. If you, say, if you say you're going to go back to the Old Testament and you're going to use that to justify mechanical instruments of music, Look what, look what Paul said. Paul said, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. Now you want to go back to Psalm 150 to use your mechanical stringed instruments of music in worship. Do you do all the things that are written in the, in the law? The point I'm trying to make is we are to live by the New Testament. Okay. Not a doubt. 
You're exactly right. So why are you going back to the Old Testament? Because uh, I'm following the same example you used to say that you was not born into sin when you used the, the scripture out of Ezekiel. Sir, but sir, that is. Not, I'm sorry, sir, if but that. God, but we're God not. We're not, not getting authority. String, if God did not want string instruments to be worshipped, sir. Why in the New Testament, in Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapter 15, the angels are worshiping God with string okay. instruments. Okay, sir. Let's let's take this one time. In Ezekiel, when we go back to Ezekiel to show that you're not born in sin, it's because that's a principle that God has stated that you're not born in sin. That's a principle. We're not talking about New Testament worship. What does Ezekiel authorize us to do in worship when it comes to being born in sin? Nothing. Ezekiel doesn't tell us anything about how to worship. The New Testament is what we follow to get our authority for worship. Do you not see the difference between what God wants in worship and showing a principle that God has always said, you're not born in sin? I mean, I don't have to go to Ezekiel to show you that you're not born in sin. If you, if you get a Greek Bible with the English Bible we're translated out of, you will read that verse and it will tell you string instrument. Sir, and I'm telling you, the word, if there's a word that says stringed instrument, you still got to play it in the heart. Now, how do, you, how do you get around that? Singing and making melody in your heart. All I can tell you is get you a Greek Bible. And Sir, read it. I've got a Greek Bible. I read, the, I read the Greek word you want me to read. No, the, the but first, that still the, that still doesn't the change the fact that it's... Out of the, Greek. Sir, the Greek does not okay. say in your heart. All right, well, let's get back to this then. If you want to, if you want to use the Old Testament, Psalm 150... I don't to, want to use the Old Testament. Then why did you go to the Old Testament? The same way you go to the Old Testament. Okay, all right. But Sir, that, that's, that's, not, that's not in the same. That's apples and baseballs. That's not in the same thing. Ezekiel does not get, we don't go to Ezekiel for authorization on what we do in worship. Yeah, I, if you don't I understand that, show, sir, then I can't I help you. Show with a Greek Bible. Sir? It's the English Bible translated out of. Sir, all right, I'm going to help you out here. The word you're wanting is Psalms, not, not songs. Not S O N G S. It's Psalms. S P S A L M S. That's no, the word no, you I'm want. Looking at, I'm looking at my Bible. It says S O N G S. The Greek translation okay. 5603. Okay. Well, uh, sir. Actually, sir, can I come on over to show the Greek Bible? Okay, sir. You can show me the Greek Bible. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm helping you out with your argument. Sir, Ephesians 519, the word you want that says stringed instrument is Psalms. P S A L M S, not S O N G S. That's the word you want. Now, even then, you still have to explain how you're going to play a mechanical instrument of music like a piano or a banjo or guitar in your heart. And you can't I'm do about that. Play from your heart. No, it's not. Doesn't say from your, heart. from your heart. Not in your heart, but play from your heart. Well, like you worship sir, God from now, your why, heart. now you need to look not up. In your heart. All right, now you need to look up the word. You need to look up the word in. If you want to talk about I Greek now, now you need to look up the in. But if you play from your heart, sir, and you use the all your sir, heart. Hello. To get something across, like I'm using all my heart to get this across. Sir, you need to look up the word. You need to look up the word in. All I want to know, can I come on your show with the Greek Bible? You can come, you can, you can come up here right now tonight and show me. All the money that you promised to give the people to show the scripture. With sir, the Greek, this Greek is the, all right, it's the original All right, language. sir, listen, I'm running out of time, and I've given you a lot of time, and we haven't accomplished anything, but here's the problem. Number one, the word you want is not this one. The word you want is uh, this one, Psalms. This is the word you want, Psalms. Not this one, but this one. All right? And here is what you have to deal with. Singing <clears throat> and making melody in your heart. That doesn't say from your heart. It's in your heart. The Greek version says. That's not what the Greek version says. I know what the Greek word is. I, I just read it today, as a matter of fact. The Greek version it's, of the verse. 
not just one particular word, the whole verse. Well, then you came on, sir, great. you came on asking about one word. Now you want to talk about the whole verse? And I'm showing you that you don't even know your argument. You sir, you don't even know your arguments. I'm help, sir, sir, I'm having to help you out with your arguments. I'm having to help you out with your arguments. And still, you're not getting it. Friends, I had to put him on hold because I've got about three minutes left. And I want to get through, or five minutes left, and I want to get through this. But here's the problem. Anybody that says you have a stringed instrument in this verse still has to explain how you play it in your heart. The only instrument in this verse is the heart. And if it's going to be played, if it's going to be played, everybody has to play one. Speaking to yourselves in Psalms and Human Spiritual Song and singing and making melody in your heart. So if that verse authorizes a piano, a guitar, a banjo, whatever, then everybody's got to do it. Because it says to yourselves, reciprocal, all right, one to another is what... Paul says in Colossians 3, verse 16. So everybody has to do it. And I know that everybody doesn't do it in these churches that use mechanical instruments of music. But here's the thing. The, the man wouldn't, the man wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't understand. If you go back to the Old Testament, friends, if you go back to the Old Testament, you're going to have to uh, explain how you don't, or why you don't keep all the other things of the Old Testament. All right? Paul said, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all things that are written in this book. There's the contradiction. There's the problem. Say, look, what about circumcision? Now, if you're going to go back to the Old Testament, friends, you're going to have to keep circumcision. Genesis 17, verse 10, God said, Every man child among you shall be circumcised. And the uncircumcised shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Now that's the covenant of the, with the Old Testament. Are you going to keep that? Do you keep that? Are you going to tell everybody they must be circumcised? They must circumcise their children on the eighth day? Well, look what the New Testament says. In New Testament, in Acts 15, 1 through 5, Peter said, Trouble them not which from among the Gentiles have turned to God. Don't trouble them with circumcision. Don't bind them. We're not binding that. We're not binding that. Romans 2, Romans 2, verse 28. He is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart. Uh, and is that a heart and in the spirit and in the and not the letter whose praise is not of men but of God? Now, are you going to keep that? You've got to if you go back to the Old Testament to get the instrument of music. You've got to keep circumcision as well. You've got to keep circumcision as well. Now, notice what Paul will say in Galatians 5 3. He said, I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. If you go back to keep the old law, and you say, well, you know, I'm going to be circumcised. I'm going to insist that we, we hold on to this part of the law. You've got to keep the whole law. You've got to keep it all. You've got to go back to Jerusalem. Take your tithes. Take your offerings. Do you do that? Do you do that? I don't, I don't think you do. You want to work from the Lord. Hey, brother, I just wanted to point out that uh, I'm looking here at the Greek to English interlinear, the King James Version New Testament by George Berry. Um, that I know you can get at the uh, Eden Public Library just to help that young man out that called. It never says from your heart. Um, word for word, it says in your heart. It doesn't say anything about uh, from anything. Right. It says with your heart. And he still can't answer the fact of why he cannot play a string instrument with his heart. It's impossible. Right. right. All right. I appreciate that. I'm running against the clock, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. Thank you. All right. Now, friends... Here's what you need to understand about the Old Testament. In Romans 10, verse 4, it says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. He's the end of the law. He's, he, he was the point of it. Now, if you say, I want to go back to the Old Testament, and that's the real Bible, you're actually saying the point of Jesus' coming is not even good enough. Notice this. In Galatians Let's look at Galatians chapter 4. 
Galatians 4 and verse 4. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of woman, made under the law, made under the law, for what purpose? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. If you go back to the Old Testament, friends, you're giving up redemption. You're giving up adoption. That's why Christ came, so that you don't have to live under the old law, so that you can be redeemed, so that you can be called children of God. But yet people say, well, I'm going to go back to the Old Testament. That's, that's the real Bible. Friends, is that really where you want to go? Is that really what you want to hold to? Let me make this, show this one last point before we, uh, before we get out of here. In the Old Testament, there was a high priest, Aaron. Sons of Aaron with high priest. All the priests came from Levi, the tribe of Levi. Jesus, Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. Paul says, seeing then we have a high priest, I believe Paul read the writer of Hebrews, Hebrew, seeing then we have a great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God. Now, it's evident, Hebrews 7, verse 14, it's evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. Moses said the priest had to come from Levi. Jesus came from Judah. The high priest had to come from the sons of Aaron, and, Levi, and Jesus was not a son of Aaron. Now, if you want Jesus to be your high priest, the mediator, the go-between, the one who's making intercession for you but with, the, with the Father, then you have to explain why it is you want to go back to the Old Testament. Jesus cannot be your high priest if you go back to the law, to the Old Testament. Christ has become of no effect to you whosoever are justified by the law, you're fallen from grace. Friends, if you go back to the Old Testament, here's what you lose. Here's what you give up. Jesus is not profited by you. He's not accepted. You're not accepted in him. You're not redeemed. You're not reconciled. You're not an heir. You're not a new creature. You don't have life in Christ. You don't have grace in Christ. You don't have the salvation that's in Christ. You don't have the uh, freedom from condemnation that's in Christ. Because you went back to the old law. You went back to be justified by the real Bible, the Old Testament. No, friends, Jesus came to bring a better way. And that's the New Testament, and that's what we follow. That's what we use as our authority, and that's what we use as our guideline today. Friends, I don't kind of rush to the last caller. I hope that uh, this helped. If we can help you in any way, we want to do that very thing, here's our content information. If we can assist you, please let us do so. Till next time, thanks for watching. Always remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. The region, the Reedsville Police Department is asking for help. They have a case where a woman's purse was taken from a business, and that happened this past weekend. There you see surveillance.